Uh, at the Roosters, Joey Manu, fullback. Big win for owners. I like it. I like it. I think we're going to see Manu this week, what we were hoping to see when he went to six. Mm. What about... Do you think that he could... I know that they were happy to move their spine around. Now, this may seem stupid, mm. but they were happy to move their spine Man, around. Do every week. Stupid spine. Okay. Well, well, he might think this is stupid. And <clears throat> Is there a world where... They can keep the one and six, Tedesco and Manu on their backs, but just get Manu one pass out wider and, and play him more as a fullback and Teddy at the second receiver. Because I think that you see the Roosters' back line. The, the, the play stops with when Manu touches the yeah. ball. Just an idea. No, no I, I don't. If you have first thought, I don't mind it much at all in the sense that Te- I mean, Teddy jumps into first receiver all the time anyway. It's like yeah. he should be sweeping out the back all the time, but. He just wants the ball so bad. Just wants to get his hands on the ball. He ends up there anyway. And Manu is just not a six, full stop. So, mm. and I'm with you. I think we've seen the last month that it gets to him. He doesn't pass it. It's not his game. You don't expect him to. And he's in two minds thinking, I'm meant to pass. I've got a directive to pass and mm. feed my outside backs. But he just doesn't do it. Full back, it'll be get the ball and run. Yeah. And it's either that tip on to the centre or he goes. Yeah. Tedesco, just, just on that point, 2021, that was when they had the, the stack of injuries mm. and he sort of jumped in at first receiver a bit yeah. more for a second receiver. 738 receipts that year. Touched the ball more times than ever in his career that year. 22 try assists. That was a career best as well. So you can see when he gets a little bit closer yeah. to the footy, a lot of people want Tedesco out of the play recently. You know, get him away from the ball. Yeah. He's doing too much. I think he needs to do more at the risk. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I'm a Tedesco owner, so I'm not <laughs> happy for him to do more. Teddy, get involved, mate. Yeah. Joe Martin, match one there. Another big one. Billy Smith at centre. Didn't play the last week. Another big win for owners because it's a match-up against the Leaky Knights fans mm-hmm. where, you know, I know he's let us down a couple of weeks in a row, but he could also go 80 to 100 this week. I don't care if Billy scores 40. He's a number this yep. week, and I think that that's, you know, that green light's on. That's all we're hoping for this week from Billy. There, there, there's enough people out there selling. Mad. No. Nah, just on a week where you have a player playing, um, to the point around Marju, if he's playing this week, I'm not selling. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Billy's there. You've got to play him. And he's like 386k. He could so easily knock out an 80 to 100 this week and earn another 150k. I just yeah. hold. Hold it. Sandon Smith at seven. Nat Butcher, front row. Satili Tupanu on the edge. Natafu wide at 13. So, yeah, a bit going on there. Guru's actually put these team lists together for me very kindly as well, and I'm reading through them. So, if there's any stitch ups here, which there's every chance. Um, it's his fault. <laughs> Trades and skippers for NRL Supergrades round 16. We'll touch on the gurus firstly. No trades, he says. Absolute coward. Uh, he's got 15 players already, so he's stacked up really well. Already owns Nico Hines, so fair play. I'd be holding fire too. Mm-hmm. Skippers, he's got VC, Kalen Ponga, C, Nico Hines. What are you looking at? Uh, much the same for me. Um, bringing in Kalen Ponga this week, and I'll just have a look at my trades here now. Uh, Ponga in for Marju. So just yep. taking advantage of that night's game at home against uh, the Chooks Saturday afternoon. I just think it's a it's a great game for Kalen. And then Connolly, Lemu, Elu out, and Johnny Bateman in. So that allows me to go VC on Ponga. I think Hines is the obvious captain as well. Beautiful. For myself, I have, I think, 13 plays at the moment. Looking at one trade... And that's Eli Katoa to Nico Hines. I would love to get Ronaldo Mulitalo in this week, but I said I've got the numbers at the moment. So unless someone else was to pull out, I'd probably hold fire on that and just stick with uh, saving a few trades. Mm-hmm. If someone does score really poorly and goes a sub sort of 25, I might look to make another trade to bolster that, but pretty happy with where it's at at the moment. VC will be uh, pretty easy ones for me this week. So Captain Nico Hines, VC Joey Manu for the Roosters. I think they look like pretty uh, knockdown options. So that's what I'm running with. Do you own Ponga? No. Okay. I was going to say, if you did own Ponga and Manu of those two, because mm. like, they're playing the same game. An interesting one. Um, just on, on your trade situation, how many have you got left? And is there a week, is it feasible where you can make, I know Guru's doing it this week, no mm. trades. Like, have you budgeted for a week with no trades in the run home? Uh, not so much budgeted for none. However, I said, have you do one this week as it stands? Next week, uh, numbers pending. My numbers look pretty good for round 17, even with the three sides on the buy. So yep. could easily go no trades next week. And I've also... 
because of injuries to other key players, I've held on to like a guy like Dave Fafida, who I still think is a genuine sell option. But mm-hmm. I've held Fafida, got Nico in this week. You know, my full are, are going very well. I've got Harry Grant still at hooker. So there's not a heap that I need to get back in. So I'm pretty happy with where it plays. Yeah.